In this video, you are going to learn how to apply some stereo microphone techniques to the drum kit as overheads using condenser, ribbon, and dynamic microphones. Coming up next. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. Hey, Robert from LearnAudioEngineering.com. Big scarf, big episode. Also, it's really cold. My province was the coldest place on earth last week, so yeah, stay warm. This episode assumes that you know what I mean by stereo and how it works, but I'm gonna give you a quick little overview about stereo microphone techniques and the two main categories that we use. The first type of stereo microphone techniques is a coincident pair. These are microphones that are so close together that they're thought to be touching. The capsules are occupying pretty much the same space. The most common example of this is the XY with two capsules about 90 to 135 degrees off axis. This is a really common microphone technique because you're gonna have minimal phase problems because the capsules are so close. The next coincident pair is the mid side, and this uses two different types of microphones. The first being a cardioid microphone, which captures the mid signal, and then a figure of eight microphone, which both lobes capture the sides. It can seem kind of complicated to set up at first, but there's plugins that can turn this type of a stereo signal into an MS, and that's really handy for adjusting the relationship between the middle and the side later on to fit in with the mix. And then the third coincident pair is the Blum line, and this uses two figure of eight microphones 90 degrees off axis, and this is great for giving you a 360 degree view of the room that is really handy for a room sound or a choir or any kind of gang vocals where you want it to really sound ambient and surround the listener. And then the second category are the non-coincident or maybe the near coincident. So these, to start, that we have the ORTF and the NOS. Uh, the ORTF is the French version, the NOS is the Dutch version, and these positions are made to recreate the spacing and the angle of human ears. So each of these two have a slightly different angle and a spacing, uh, but honestly, I usually eyeball this setup, so I approach them as, as two versions of the same technique. And then finally, we have the one true stereo microphone technique for drum overheads, and that is the spaced pair, also known as AB. And this is a technique that I absolutely love because it allows you to place both microphones wherever you want to accent or emphasize any part of the kit and you can really control what that left and right spread is. So this might bring up a few more questions like, well, how do I divide the drum kit? And then how high should I place those overheads? So let's talk about dividing the drum kit and placing these overheads. It's pretty universally accepted that we want our kick and our snare drum to show up in the middle. So that's what we're going to be using as our center line. If you're sitting down at a drum kit, that doesn't really divide it absolutely in the center. It's sort of a little bit of an angle. The way that I like to set up my kit, that would go from the snare drum across the ride cymbal because I like my ride cymbal to be right on top of my kick drum. So what that would mean is that everything on my left, the hi-hat, the rack tom, and my left crash would all be left speaker and then in the right, I would have the other microphone placed over the floor tom, and that would make the floor tom and anything on the right side of me to be the right. And what this does is it keeps the snare and the kick up the center so long as you measure from those points. So it's really common and a really good idea to measure both overheads and make sure that they're equidistant from the center of the snare drum. And I'm sure I've said this before in other videos, but it really is that simple, but that important. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is your snare drum is gonna show up in one speaker or one microphone sooner than the other one. You're gonna get, it's gonna skew, skew your stereo image and it might actually cause some phasing problems if they're not equidistant from that center. If you guys are curious to learn more about stereo microphone techniques, check the description below for a link to my book, How to Record Anything with Clarity and Character, where I have a whole chapter on stereo microphone techniques, plus a whole lot more recording tips. And just a quick note on perspective, I used to be an audience perspective person and I still kind of am for live sound, but in the studio, I would definitely go drummer perspective. And my reasoning is the drummer is the only one that's going to complain, so just make them happy. And finally, how high should you place the overheads? And this is gonna bring us finally to our audio examples. I've chosen two mic positions, one, 
32 inches from the snare and then another 40 inches from the snare and I've recorded some takes with all three types of microphones, condenser, ribbon, and dynamic. So we're gonna listen to some examples with all three microphones and hear how they add a different character to the drum set. Uh, we're gonna hear each of the overhead positions soloed with all three of the microphones. Let's check that out. So obviously condensers are a go-to choice for drum overheads because they add a certain brightness and that high frequency detail. But ribbons can be a really nice delicacy if you really wanna tame those harsh cymbals and overtones. Also, they take really well to EQ. So if they're a little too dark and you wanna brighten them up with a nice analog style EQ or something like that, they're gonna sound very, very nice. They really sparkle when you add top end to them. And then finally, the dynamic microphones. These you wouldn't usually use as drum overheads and they'd kind of be like a last resort if that's all you had, but they're rugged, they're durable, and they can handle loud sounds and flying sticks. So there's really no reason that they couldn't be used as drum overheads to get more of a mid-focused sound on the drums. So let's listen to some examples of these microphones in both of the positions in with the rest of the drum mix.
So I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanna know what is your favorite stereo microphone technique for drum overheads? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're new. It really helps the channel out when you do that. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.